Howdy. And as we all know by now, seeing that the dang thing has been out for nine years, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim is a very big game. And of course, with this girth comes a lot of NPCs. I mean, just look. <laughs> And by now, you know, my videos usually consist of me doing what no other living human would dare do. Why, why do I come? Why do I come up with these ideas? Why do I do this to myself? But I do do this to myself, so I can't complain. I think I'm a masochist. Anyways, another burden has fallen on my shoulders. I am going to attempt to explain every single NPC in Skyrim. When some of you commented this, you meant it as a joke. But I don't joke around here, baby. We're doing this. But I don't want to make a seven hour long video, so we are doing this in sections divided by city. And we're just going to go from there. And what better place to start than the central city itself, the place we all know and love, Whiterun? Quick note. This is obviously a lot of research, arrangement, and organization for me to summarize all this info in a concise way. So if I miss one or two tiny things like how Yasolda holds flowers or something, you will just have to forgive me on that one. These are quick summaries, okay? We're not gonna go over every last detail. Forgive me if I talk really fast in some areas, like the lightning round areas. That's just, this is a lot of information to go over, dude, so let's get into this. What better person to start this off with than the big daddy king himself, Jarl Balgriff? Balgriff is the Jarl of Whiterun, obviously. If you didn't know, Jarl means king. And he truly cares for his people's well-being and their needs before anything else. Else. He doesn't choose a side in the war initially for his people's safety, but he does choose Team Empire at the end of the day. Now, there is a rumor that he killed his wife or something, but eh, I don't buy into any of that. He's pretty dope. And he's also a big part of the story, too. But as Jarl, he has a lot of people around him. Let's go over some of them, shall we? Such as his three kids. The eldest is Frothar. Now, I know children in Skyrim are the definition of the word, what is it, awful, but this kid actually is an awful that bad. He's next in line to be Jarl, and he actually looks down on his siblings for being spoiled little freaking brats. Good job, Frothar. The middle child is Dagny. The girl is probably the main reason people install the Killable Kids mod. She's a spoiled brat because she gets everything she wants, so click, click. The youngest child is Nelkir. But see, this kid has a different mother than his two siblings, meaning Balgriff may be a player? But this isn't explained all too well. Anyways, Nelkir is also spoiled, but more importantly, he is is being talked to by the Daedric Prince Mephala, so uh, I don't know. Good luck without Nelkir. The last family member of the Jarl is Hrongar, who is his brother. He's not really too important. Basically, he just wants the Jarl to join the Civil War and not just sit idly by. Nothing else really to know. Farngar is his court wizard. This guy is basically happy in life if he can just study all day and just go through his books. He's harmless enough, even though he's a bit rude to you, but eh, he's still a nerd. <laughs> oh, it's a joke. Come on, I'm a nerd too. Then we have Ireleth, who is the Jarl's housecarl. She fought alongside him in the past, so they're actually very close. She's like super, super protective over him, so don't screw him over or you're going to get some dark elf beat down. Unless that's your thing, you weirdo. Then there is Preventius, who is his steward. He's a skeptical weenie, but eh, yeah, I guess he's fine. Nothing really of note, really. And lastly, we have his two maids, Gerda and Fianna. Uh, they're nice. That's about it for them. But we cannot discuss Whiterun without mentioning probably the biggest draw of the whole city, that being the Companions. This is a warrior's guild full of freaking awesome, well, uh, uh, well, warriors. They take on public and private contracts to protect the people of Skyrim. They're awesome, but oh, a select few members of them are, uh, freaking werewolves? But I'm not here to go over the whole rundown of the guild itself. Let's look at the members, such as their pseudo-leader, Kodlak. He's an amazing warrior, probably the best in the entire guild. But see, he doesn't want to be a werewolf anymore because he wants to go to the Nordic heaven rather than the werewolf heaven when he dies. And you can actually help him with that. So dope. Good job, Kodlak. Time to go over the rest of the werewolves. Let's start with Skjar. He's the second strongest companion in the whole guild next to Kodlak. He fought in the Great War, went on to be a sellsword, and then joined the companions afterwards. There is also a rumor that he is romantically involved with Ayla, who is another member of this circle inside the companions. But she's also my queen, so I think me and him need to step down into this dark basement for a, uh, 
uh, discussion. Ayala is a master archer, and look, okay, there is way too much backstory to explain in a quick summary here, so let's just say she's a freaking awesome werewolf heroine warrior, and the community loves her for a reason. The last two werewolves are the brothers Farkas and Vilkas. Farkas is blunt and just a big strong himbo, but he's also scared of spiders, which is just freaking adorable. Then we have Vilkas, who is the master of arms of the companions and the master two-handed weapons trainer. And well, him and his brother are like Ayala, there's just too much to explain. But they were raised by Jurgen and rescued from necromancers, so they're really awesome NPCs all around. Time for the less cool companions. Aethys is the only dark elf companion and an expert one-handed trainer. He's also from Merwin, that's about it. Najata Stonearm is an expert block trainer who is a turd to you most of the time, but she warms up to you after she witnesses your Chad aura. Trovar, a jolly drunk who gets very jealous of the dragonborn when he witnesses your Chad aura. Rhea, who is the newest companion, she's just a happy, joyful kind of person and just always happy and joyful. Then there's Brill, who isn't actually a companion, he just feels like he owes them his lifelong debt. Lastly, Tilmath Haggard. She's the maid of the companions who has worked there longer than anyone has actually been a member. Basically, she's uh, basically raised Farkas and Vilkas. She's just been here forever. She won't even attack you if you turn into a werewolf in front of her. I love this old angel. And that's the companions. <gasps> Let's keep going. The Greymanes and the Battleborns. These are the warring clans of Whiterun. They used to be friends until the Civil War did what Civil Wars do and divided them. This is because the Battleborn support the Empire and the Greymanes support the Stormcloaks. Let's start with the Battleborn because this is my video and I said so. The leader of the clan is Alfred, patron of the great clan Battleborn. Yeah, that guy. He's rich from owning a farm and he really brags about it. He's actually a war hero too from the Great War. He's married to Bargit. I think that's how you say her name. Nothing at all worth mentioning about her, but she is the mother of Alfhild. She works all day at the family farm, and she is the voice of reason, thinking that the family feud is unnecessary and stupid. No, I didn't mean it like that. She is the complete polar opposite of her husband, Eidolof, who is obsessed with this family feud. Stop it. Yeah, I don't like him that much. He is the father of Lars, who is a beta in every sense of the word. He's a sweet, kind kid, but he doesn't stand up for himself against a girl who's just bullying him all day. More on that abomination of a child later. The last Battleborn is John, who is described as a romantic. He is actually secretly in a relationship with Ophnia Greymane, an obvious nod to Romeo and Juliet. How poetic literally. He also hates Mikael, so yeah, I like this one. More on him later. But now it's time for the Greymanes. Their leader is Vignar, who is a highly respected person, a commander in the Great War, and even a, was even a companion at one point. He even becomes Jarl if the Stormcloaks win the Civil War, so he's lived a life, that's for sure. But he also really likes Heimsker, though, so he can join him in the Shallow Grave. Orlin Greymane is the blacksmith at the Skyforge, that means he's also the blacksmith for the companions, meaning he's probably probably the best blacksmith in all of Skyrim. Good job, Orland. However, his obsession with this forge has caused some anger in his wife, Frilia. She operates a jewelry stand selling the jewelry he makes at the Skyforge in the central part of town and gives you a quest that I will go over in a second. Hold on to your britches, that will be mentioned later. The rest of the Grey Mains are all her and his kids, actually. One of them is Alvestein, who is just the average guy who loves his family. He's kinda scared crapless from the Grey Main quest, though. In a second, friend, I'll get to that quest, don't mention it. Another kid of Frilia is Ulfnia, who, as I mentioned earlier, is in a romantic relationship with John Battleborn. Good job, you two. Lastly, there's Thorold, who is the central point of the Greymane quest. Basically, he's a Stormcloak who was kidnapped by the Thalmer, and the Greymanes think that it was actually the Battleborn clan who kidnapped him. In reality, the Battleborns were just told to keep it a secret and just try to quelch it down if people start suspecting it. You rescue him from the dungeons, and he runs to Windhelm to fight again. And that's the Greymanes. Okay, with that being done, it means all four main factions of Whiterun are done. So time for the final long lightning round for the rest of the inhabitants of this great city that suddenly seems much, much bigger while I'm writing a script over it. Get ready. Okay, first the people in the Temple of Kinareth. Acolyte Jensen, who is just the average priest who heals sick people. Good job, Acolyte Jensen. Donson's Pure Spring, a master restoration priest who wants the Dragonborn to bring her sap. She has a sick brother, so yeah, poor her. Alheim is another healer, but she owns Chilfer Old Farm with her husband Nazim, who is such a bad guy. It has made her hate all other men. Nazim is a political advisor for the Jarl, but that's not the important part about them. He's a mean, stupid jerk, and he's dead now. Adriana Avecchi, who is a blacksmith and owner of War Maiden. Freaking awesome name, dude. I love that name for a store. She's a strong warrior who I really like, actually. She's daughter of Aventius, yeah, the steward. And she's more of an advisor for the Jarl than he actually is. It's kind of a secret, though. Don't tell anybody. Shh. 
Her husband is Ulf Berth the War Bear, who works War Maiden's counter. That's about it for him. Armentime, a one-handed weapons trainer who quit the military to live a family life. He sends you on a quest to find his ancestral sword he's obsessed with. He's married to Sophia, who likes books. Cool. But more importantly, their kid is brave. She's a kid who bullied Lars. She's mean and probably a main reason people want to kill a lot of kids in this game. In reality, she just has a crush on Lars, Battleborn, so yeah, the beta has won someone over at least, but this chick's a brat, so uh, just install a mod. Holda, the owner of the Bannered Mayor, she wants to retire and sell it to Yasolda, who wants to own so many shops so freaking badly that if the owners die, she will actually take over their shops and sell stuff in their place. Good job, Yasolda. She's also a skooma dealer, which you guys never let me live down because I didn't mention it in my spouse's video. In the Bannered Mayor, there's a lot more people to go over, so let's go over those people real quick. Such as Simnir, who hates the guards and the captain, he thinks that he could do a much better job, and if the Stormcloaks win, he actually gets to become captain, but he does a way worse job. Good job, Simnir. In the same place is Ulfgar the Unbroken, who wanted to join the companions, but whenever she was sparring to see if she was strong enough, she accidentally killed her sparring partner, and now she's very, very sad. Beat her up to make a friend. Then there's Mikael, who is the bard of the Bannered Mayor. Quick note, he wrote the book, The Gentleman's Guide to Whiterun. He is a scum person who harasses women, so burn all the books when you find them. A barb maiden at the Bannered Mayor is Sodia, which isn't even her real name. Her real name is Iman. She's from Hammerfeld and being chased by the Alakir. This quest is really complicated to summarize in one little paragraph, so a link to a summary isn't going to be in the description down below. Then there's Anarath, who owns the Drunken Huntsman with his brother. The store got its name whenever he got drunk and accidentally saw his brother. That brother being Elrendir. He's still sour about it. In the Drunken Huntsman is also Janessa, who you can hire for her murderous specialty. She's very cold and bitter. I actually really like her a lot. Then we have Bellathor, owner of Bellathor's general goods, surprisingly enough. Women call him sleazy, so ew, gross Bellathor, kill him. His employee is Sigurd, that's about all there is for Sigurd, poor Sigurd. Then we have Lilith Maidenloom, who has ties to Maven Blackberry, so she's really sketchy, she also owns the stables. At said stables, Skolvar is the stable master. He thinks his son is stupid, and also quick note, the horse he sells you is actually named Ali. Aw, good job, Ali. His son is Jarvar. His name is Jarvar, which is a really stupid name and makes me think of Jarvis, but other than that, there's nothing really important about him. Good job, Jarvar. Then we have Arcadia, owner of Arcadia's cold who tries to trick you constantly into thinking you're sick so you can buy her medicine so she's dead now. Heimsker, priest of, oh okay, yep, next. Anders, priest of RK. He watches over the halls of the dead, small backstory, but nothing worth wasting our time over. Carlotta, who is irresistible to men. She runs a fruit stand with her daughter and Mikael harasses her so he's dead now. Her daughter is Mia, who's best friends with the beta. She's actually a really sweet girl, but not as sweet as Lucia, who's a homeless beggar child who you can actually adopt and I always do. She was trained to survive on the streets by Brynwen, who's also homeless, but he is a heart of gold, kind of, even though he's kind of a drunk. So he's not dead now. Olava the Feeble, who is a fortune teller who has ties to the Dark Brotherhood, the Khajiit Caravan, and she's actually also a skooma dealer. So freaking hardcore granny. Next is Will Murph, who works for Nazim. I pity you. He's dead now. Lydia, who is your house Carl, and actually my lovely freaking queen, please carry my burdens. Securio Pelgus, farmer, veteran, uh, Nimrel's lover. Sam Goovin, you unlock at level 14, and he challenges you to a drinking competition in which you get drunk and pass out. His quest is amazing. Look it up. It's really cool. Lastly, we have Commander Kais, who is the captain of the guard. I might have missed one or two small people, but that's because these people do not appear here in the city until you have completed their quest chain. So to me, they aren't really residents of Whiterun until way later on, so I'll go over them later on in the series. Okay, we are done. Check out my Discord and my new Twitter in the description. Anyway, thanks guys. See ya. <sighs> my throat is killing me.